Hey, what's up, guys? Nick Acosta. Hope everybody's doing good today, man. I was just um, thinking about Peter and John. Right after Jesus ascended, right, the church grouped up together and started doing the work of ministry. And Peter and John were walking, and they saw a lame man who was begging. He was now a beggar, right? He had been lame since he was young, and it's like he just wants money. He's just there asking for money. He wants money. If you give him some eye contact, he's going to expect you to give him some money. If you come near him, he's got his hand out. Give me something, right? We all know beggars. We, we see this. We know about this. It's real, and it was real back in those days too, okay? And here goes Peter and John, and they approach the beggar, and they make eye contact with him, and he sees them, and he's like, oh, I'm about to get some from him. It's a good day. Here comes some change. Here comes some money. And I know in today's day, guys, we've uh, we've heard a lot of emphasis on, you know, meet the people's needs, meet their physical needs. People need, you know, blankets. They need covers. They need clothes. They need rent money, bill money. They need groceries. Meet people's needs. Don't only go after them to try to pray for them and try to get them saved and et cetera, et cetera. Also meet their needs, right? Give them what they need. Give them a, a shelter. Give them, a, you know, some food, some, some hot cocoa, some coffee. Help them, right? Some rent money, bill money, etc. We know God cares for the poor very, very much. And this is true. However, we can get so on, uh, on that whole physical, natural need thing that we get off of the scriptures and, and off of our purpose as Christians, as the light of the world, as those who are supposed to be walking like Christ walked. And if we read the Bible in the New Testament, the four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, we see a whole lot of supernatural things coming out of Jesus during his ministry in, in, in a few natural things, right? And we see him encouraging him, encouraging us to take care of the widows and the orphans and the poor and the children and things like that. But we see a whole lot of what we read in the book of Acts peter and john doing in this situation here they walk up to the man and the man's expecting money and guess what they say they say hey money change dollar bills i don't have that but what I have for you is so much better, man. It's something you've been wanting since you were young, since you were a child, since you were lame. You've been wanting to walk. You've been wanting to stand up. You've been wanting to be able to leap and to jump and to praise God, huh? I got that for you. So take my hand and get up in the name of Jesus. Be healed. And Peter grabbed his hand and it was on. What? The kingdom of God. When Jesus was healing the sick and working miracles and casting out demons, the Bible says that the kingdom of God was coming upon people by the Holy Spirit. And that's exactly what took place in the ministry of not only the apostles, but the disciples of Jesus Christ, all those who followed him, who believed in him, including Stephen. Amen. So we see that the same authority that Christ was walking in, now his followers are walking in, right? The same ministry that Christ was doing, that his disciples are doing, right? And the same kingdom that he's manifesting by the power of the Spirit. So are his disciples and the same needs that he's meeting, now they're meeting, right? The Bible says that he came and that he was light among darkness and that he was destroying the works of the devil, what kind of works was they destroying? Man, we see his ministry. We see the love and the mercy and the grace and the peace. We see that gentleness. But we also see that anger in the temple. And we see that uh, ferocious preaching of authority and power. And we see the casting out of demons and the cleansing of the lepers and the healing of the sick and the raising of the dead and the casting out of demons. We see power. We see authority. We see boldness. We see no weakling. We see the Lord himself. And that's the ministry he's called us to. Amen. So be reminded today. It's good to give people money. It's good to help people with the bills. It's good to go feed the homeless and give them covers and blankets and help them find a home and all that stuff. But don't forget that the Spirit of God is in you. Not only to do something that unbelievers can also do, 
that rich people, millionaires, and charities are doing every day. I'm not saying to stop, but I'm telling you, they can't do what you can do. They can't prophesy. They can't heal the sick. They can't bring the kingdom of God upon somebody's life to change their life forever like that lame beggar's life was changed when Peter told him to rise up in the name of Christ. So change somebody's life today because I'm sure that beggar would have been kind of happy to receive some money from Peter and John, but he would have never been as happy as the scripture shows in the book of Acts that he was. He was jumping. He was hopping. He was leaping. He was praising God. His life changed forever. So change somebody's life forever by bringing the power of God upon them because Christ has given you authority over all the power of the enemy, over sicknesses and diseases. I don't care what denomination you're from. I don't care what you were taught because if you see it in the Bible, you see everything that points to us having the same spirit Christ had, having the same ability to do the same ministry. He said it himself, same works. And what? Sometimes even what? Even greater. If you believe that you can't walk, that you can't operate in the gifts of the spirit, that's on you. But you're, but you're only allowing somebody to, somebody other than the Lord, other than his word to teach you that. Because you can't see nowhere in scripture that it says the gifts stop. Or that the Holy Spirit doesn't manifest through people anymore. Even though our bodies are called his temple and his presence is in us. You can't see that in the Bible. You had to be taught that by somebody who gave up on believing them. On believing God. So let me remind you what the scriptures say. Follow the example of Jesus. And give somebody today what they will never forget. And something that will change their life forever. Give somebody something that will change their life forever. The kingdom of God. And they will believe in the Lord in, in, in greater ways. In greater ways. People can believe in the Lord by you telling them about the gospel and, and, and loving them and giving them money and things like that. Don't get me wrong. Giving them a Bible. Don't get me wrong. I didn't, I didn't see a miracle when I was saved. But we've seen so many people who will get healed and then start to follow Jesus. We see it in real life today and we saw it in the Bible then. So why not continue that model of Christ himself? Bring the kingdom of God upon people. Start believing God for miracles, signs, wonders, the gifts of the Spirit to operate, manifest in your life, in your ministry. Don't give up on the power of God. His Spirit is in you. And guess what? He wants to manifest through you. And God is the Spirit. The Spirit is God. And the Bible says He never changes. So if He manifested and through those manifestations and gifts back then, He will do it today because He's the same God. And He's in you the same way He was in Peter and John. So let's grow. And give somebody the kingdom of God because God died for them. Jesus died for them. God became human and died for them to save them. And he did things to help people believe. Why won't you bring the kingdom of God to people? People want to be healed. There's so many sick people, suffering people. Come on. People need our help. They need the power of God. So help them today and lead them to a closer chance, a closer possibility of believing in the Lord. By your mighty works, the Lord says, let your light shine so they will believe in me, so they will glorify in me. Be the salt of the earth so that they, they taste the flavor. They taste the flavor of the Lord because there's too much flavorless things going on. Don't lose your flavor. Still taste like Christ. Taste like light. Walk in love and remember the Lord has given you power and authority. What? To bring his kingdom by the spirit everywhere you go. Let's grow. Bless you guys.